movies, literature, and fiction love success stories. We frequently imagine owning the most beautiful homes in the Philippines, marrying our perfect companions, purchasing that expensive sports car, investing in luxury real estate, or raising our children in a luxury palace. The good news is that genuine people have left their comfort zones to show us how they achieve their dreams. Powerful, knowledgeable, and generous self, made millionaires. Musk, Winfrey, and Bezos shape the picture. Britney Corporation's house symbolizes success. However, their personal stories have shown us that picture, perfect requires work. After all, a success tale requires a true test of character, courage, and will to succeed. Many self-made millionaires see themselves as warriors who have just begun, even after owning luxury real estate. This video is about success stories of self-made millionaires. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel before starting this video. Let us look at 4 Millionaire Success Tales that will undoubtedly motivate you to shape your own future. Number 1. Super Bowl winner Michael O'Hare was a troubled homeless child. The Blind Side, starring Sandra Bullock, is a must, see. Michael O'Hare was a homeless teenager whose mother was a crack addict who lived in public housing and whose estranged father was slain while he was a high school senior. He was born in 1986 during the U.S. crack cocaine epidemic. His 11 siblings were reared amid turmoil. His mother's drug addiction caused social services to remove him and his siblings from their parents in first grade. He cycled through foster care after that. Michael O'Hare's story, which started with a few good people, will restore your faith in humanity. After moving schools and repeating grades, Tony Henderson learned he was a good, athletic kid. He was an auto mechanic who gave him a temporary home and enrolled him in a Christian school, where he met the Tuis, a wealthy family whose children also attended. Since he wore the same clothing and skipped lunch, the Tuis welcomed him at 16. From poverty to a mansion, he first sensed familial affection and acceptance here. He also excelled at American football. He received many scholarship offers from top universities for his athletic prowess. CHLHR achieved his dreams by working hard. He owns Upper LLV. He won the 2008 ACA Blocking Trophy. He was also the 2008 Unimol, American. He earned first EAM in 2007 and 2008. He played second team in 2006. Number 2. Larry Ellison, co-founder of Oracle, was an adoptive college dropout. Without Larry Ellison's success story, one of the largest brands in technology would not be the same. Born in 1944 to a Jewish single mother in one of America's poorest neighborhoods, he did not realize until later that he had been adopted by his aunt and uncle after his mother was unable to care for him after he had pneumonia. During the Great Depression, his adoptive father was a Russian immigrant government employee who struggled to make ends meet for the family. He went to the University of Illinois in Urbana, Champaign and was named Scientific Student of the Year in Pre-Med. He dropped out, however, owing to the loss of his adopted mother, with whom he was allegedly quite close. He was accepted to the University of Chicago following that, but dropped out soon after. At the age of 20, too, Larry Ellison took a leap of faith and relocated to Berkeley, California. He happened to be in the right location at the right moment in what would soon be Silicon Valley's future. He did odd jobs for IT companies here, where he learned computer and programming skills. He eventually made enough money to form software development laboratories with his partners. The concept of a relational database was influenced by IBM computer scientist Edgar F. Codd's ideas. This database was a method for computer systems to store and retrieve information, which Larry Ellison made a reality. Such a database was innovative at the time, and we still use it now. Following the release of its main product in 1982, the firm was renamed Oracle Systems Corp. However, like with most success tales, the road ahead was not without bumps. In 1990, the firm was on the verge of bankruptcy, forcing it to lay off 10% of its workforce. Larry was at the end of his rope, but he persisted, and after a decade, he was able to restore the firm. He also started investing in his rivals, such as Salesforce, as well as other tech businesses, such as Tesla and, for a while, Apple. For what it is worth, Ellison did not become a billionaire until he was 49 years old. According to Bloomberg's Billionaires Index, 
he now has a net worth of $84.3 billion, making him the world's 10th wealthiest person. Number 3. As the first college graduate in his family history, Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz labored to pay for his own education. Howard Schultz and his two siblings were born in the Brooklyn slums to immigrants. His father struggled to sustain his family after World War II by working multiple jobs. On his website, Howard claimed his most distinct memory of his father was seeing him slumped against the couch with a cast, sad after being fired after hurting his hip and ankle while delivering cloth diapers. He had no health insurance, like many Americans at the time. This problem inspired Howard to improve his life and others. Howard became a Starbucks marketer. Coffee was becoming an addiction. He got his first espresso in Italy on a work trip and learned that Italian cafes were romantic and a place to relax and talk. There was no seating and just whole, bean coffee, unlike Starbucks in America. He left Starbucks and found an IL Journal, named after a Milanese newspaper, after arguing with the founders. During the 2008 financial crisis, he helped Starbucks become a worldwide brand. Number 4. IKEA creator Ingvar Kamprad grew up on a farm selling matches. Not all self-made millionaires grew up in the city. Kamprad was reared in Sweden on a modest farm. He was a natural businessman from the start, selling matches in bulk at the age of five. As a peddler around town on his bike, he then extended to selling fish, Christmas decorations, and pens. Finally, at the age of 17, his father handed him a monetary prize for academic success. With this money, he established IKEA at his uncle's kitchen table. IKEA is an acronym that stands for his initials, Ingvar Kamprad, his family farm, Elmterid, and the community where he grew up, Agunarid. I have never come across a firm with a more personal name than that. However, many people are unaware that IKEA did not begin as a furniture firm. It started as a tiny mail, order firm, which involves the purchase and sale of things by postal delivery. He eventually discovered that furniture was the company's largest seller, so he concentrated the majority of his efforts to it. IKEA is now an international company specializing in the design and sale of ready to assemble furniture. It is also so well known that it was already a household name in the Philippines before IKEA arrived, despite the fact that it has not yet completely opened its doors to the public. That was accomplished by a 17-year-old rural lad in high school. Camp Rad cared deeply about his furniture. It was his narrative of success. Discover success in your own luxury home and lot for sale in the Philippines. That is it for today. If like this video please give it a thumbs up and make sure to click on the subscribe button for more amazing video.